Good morning everyone, today we're checking out a brand new, okay, an older video from Popcross Studios, but continuing on in Mythalethal with The Beast Come Marching Part 3, let's hop in. When Ortis Venema was trying to fall asleep, his that? head had still been spinning with the idea no, that- No, no, hold on, hold on, let me move myself so y'all can see this. What the absolute heck is that thing? It's like someone took an elephant, a snake, uh, an old world hippo, and also a dash of croc- of, no, a uh, shark because of all those tusks. Like, holy damn, what is that thing? Okay, continuing on now. At any moment he could be awakened by furious gods or demigods coming to slay him or his god queller ally, Mythal. Thankfully, she barely needed any sleep, and could keep watch while he rested in the woods, a ways outside the newly built city of Constantinople. Mythal had slain four gods already, after centuries of most people believing gods couldn't be killed mm -hmm. at all. It had been thrilling- There was one in the first episode, and three now. ...for Ortis well, to three see, last but time. was sure to draw some unwanted attention from the other gods. Or, as far as Mythal was concerned, some very much wanted attention. Even with his nerves spinning, Ortis was able to fall asleep quite quickly, with his arms firmly wrapped around his new weapon, the Suriastra, taken for him from the second deity Mythal had slain. Ortis slept soundly and even had a surprisingly pleasant dream. He was flying over a vast forest, past Mythal's home, and back to New Athens. Everyone was at peace in his home city, and the animosity between hmm. those who praised different gods had vanished. His heart felt oh, full peaceful. as he saw the revitalized sense of community and felt the ecstasy of soaring through the air. But then noticed a tight pain on one ankle. As he focused on it, he suddenly started to hear a familiar voice. Hey, mortal, I get that you humans need lots of this sleep thing, but come on, hmm? wake up already, we gotta talk. Oh, it's Ortis' Andy. eyes opened and he was staring at the upside-down armored torso of Ares, the Greek god of war. It took Ortis a moment to realize he was actually the inverted one. Ares had him held in the air oh. by the ankle. There he is, rise and shine, kid. That you got some, explains uh, it. Oh, hold on a sec. In a blur, Mythal burst onto the scene, swinging her blade at Ares. The god of war caught her hand, and they all slid a few steps to the side from the impact. Well, that's a pretty good swing you got there, god queller, but you're not quite at my level. Maybe the monsters coming to kill you two will help get you there. Ares pushed Mythal back and... Sw I just realized, that thing literally has a skull tusk. And that is horrifically awesome. Swung Ortis around. He landed on his feet awkwardly as Ares unhooked a massive tome from his side and tossed it into Ortis's hands. He practically fell backwards catching it. Whoa, what? What is this thing? And what, uh, what do you mean about monsters? Ask again, kid. More gusto, less stammering. Go, Ares said, casually catching another uh, swing uh, from Mithra's right. blade. Ortis nodded and took a breath. Right. I asked what you meant about monsters coming to kill us, and Mythal, I think he's here to help. Maybe you should- Mythal ripped her blade back from Ares' grip. I don't care, he's a god. We're on a quest to kill gods. This is what we do. Ortis looked okay, at Ares as he know. blocked another swing like it was nothing. He then looked down at the book in his hands, then back at Mythal. Not well, making any progress. I'd like to hear him out, so please, stand down. Mythal stopped swinging and looked at Ortis with a surprised and somewhat smug grin. Well, look at you trying to take charge. Perhaps Ares is a good influence after all. Yes, all right, so you good. have five minutes, God of War. Regale us with the reason you risked losing your head to visit us once again. Not much of a risk there yet, girly, but you'll get there. Anyway, the gods are all buzzing about you two now, especially the ones on the Empyrean Pantheon. You two got their attention enough for them to even start a little game focused on you two. I mean, mostly her. Sorry, kid. You'll make your mark, too, I'm sure. Is it betting? Ortis struggled to hold up the massive betting? book. What kind of game, and what does this thing have to do with it? Well, the game is called Who Can Make the Monster That Captures the God Queller. Not the catchiest name they could have come up with, but a lot of them are wanting in on it anyway. That book ah, you've got there is something I stole off Echidna. She made it a few centuries back when the other pantheons of gods started popping up so she could know what kinds of monsters they were making. It's an enchanted tome, and any time any god makes a new monster, it appears in that book with info about the god that made it. So oh, fair to useful. say that new pages that pop up are beasties that could be coming for you two soon. But don't put it past him to send an old monster after you, too. Mortis opened the book and started flipping to the back as he said, Well, this sounds dangerous, but I can't say I didn't see something like this coming. 
Plus, this oh, is probably better coming. than gods themselves coming after us. I can't do any fatal damage to gods, but I can kill monsters with the Suryastra. One arrow from it did serious damage to Apollo's beast, Fidiarma. Mythal raised an eyebrow at him. I remember that. That snake minotaur thing had a name, and you remembered its name. Orta shrugged. I'm good with names. People appreciate it when you remember their names. Understandable, but dead monsters probably don't care much. Mythal chuckled. Anyhow, I'm know. up for a monster never slaughter. Know. What is it we'll likely be facing first, O oh wise god of war? Ares crossed his arms, looking past Mythal and Ordis. If I had to guess, I'd say some big purple elephant snake thing with uh, very yellow shoulders and a skull sort of shape at the end of its nose. Ordis landed on a page with a creature that fit that description. Found it. Okay, I, I see that here, fourth page from the back. The Groat Slang? Originally born at the dawn of time, but the Zulu deity in Kulunkula tore it in two and created both elephants and snakes from it. Oh, that's It was that's just recently badass. remade by the Celtic god of nature and member of the Imperium Pantheon, Sir Nanos. But Nanos? Why do you think that'll Nanos? come for us first? It's not at the very back of the book. How do you pronounce that? Because mm, it's right there. Have a good time, you two. Ares Ocrat. vanished in a swirl of black smoke as Ordis and Mythal whipped around. In the distance, they saw trees being felled by a stomping, slithering elephant cobra monstrosity. Ordis dropped the book and yeah, grabbed the Suryastra. Good. All right, Mithil, how do you want to handle the... But as he looked over to his ally, he saw that she was already in a full sprint towards the beast. Ordis nodded. I am going to get used to that eventually. Ordis snatched the tome back up and stumbled this on after Mithil, carrying his bow in one hand and the massive beast book in the other. His weapon was specifically made for ranged combat, but he still needed to get closer to ensure his aim would be true. Not that he could use his weapon on the beast when Mythal was so up close to it. His godcaller ally reached the Groot Slang, which reared back its head and roared to intimidate her. Mythal was unfazed, but Ordis felt a chill run through his body, and its tail stretched back far enough into the distance that Ordis couldn't even see the whole thing through the bushes and rocks. Damn, Mythal swung her blade at its leg, but the Groot Slang darted its head down and blocked the blade with its tusk. It's like you're giving that thing the Yulman Gondol link. It then swung its trunk towards her. She raised an arm to block it, but the swipe hit right through her arm and smacked her torso, sending her flying back into a boulder. Ordis took that opportunity to drop the tome again and create a flaming arrow on Suryastra, aimed at the beast. He thought Mithil was far enough from it that the explosions it caused wouldn't touch her, but before he could loose the shot, Mithil had sprung back over to the beast and leapt onto its head. She held tight to a spike on its upper neck as it tried to violently shake her off. Oh, Ordis then lowered on. his arrow. He loved this weapon and felt incredibly powerful wielding it, but how could he help in combat if he couldn't shoot it at anything that Mythil was up close and brawling with? So he kept nervously waiting for any opening to finally take a shot. Well, we have an elephant snake demon, and I will say it is awesome. Next up we have... From atop its head, Mythil stabbed her blade. A human face spider, specifically a yokai. I don't remember its name, but I know of that specific uh, Japanese demon. I can't remember a damn thing about it, though, but I remember it. ...towards the Groot Slang's skull, but it whipped its trunk back and grabbed the weapon, holding off the attack. Mythil continued trying to drive the blade in, but then stopped and tore it out of the beast's trunk, cutting massive gashes in the monster's nose. It shrieked and swung its head so far back that it slammed Mythil into the ground. Ordis didn't want Mythil hurt, but he hoped she'd stay down for a moment so the beast could retreat from her. He still didn't get his shot, though, as Mythil kept holding tight to its head as it swung back up, then again smashed her back into the ground. Ordis was frustrated, but he knew there had to be something he could do to Ooh, help. Hold on, a uh, misconception. You're about to make this thing three-segmented? Spiders are not three-segmented. They only have, have the head and abdomen. If you're giving it a thorax, you're not making a spider, but you are making a monstrous insect. Sorry, I like bugs. Help. That was when he noticed again how far back the beast's tail stretched. Part of it was slithering over some distant rocks, well away from where its head was battling with Mythil. He aimed up his flaming arrow again and waited for the beast's writhing to slow. He waited and waited then finally released. Now, the arrow didn't quite hit dead on, but it struck rock right next to the tail and exploded, scorching some of the beast's scales off and sending chunks of stone pelting into it. The Groot Slang shrieked, looking back at its smoldering tail. That gave Mythil a perfect opening. She reared back her sword and cocked her wrist. 
white mist exploded around it, and she swung down with all her ferocity, but not at its head. She managed to chop almost all the way through one of the creature's tusks. It roared out in fury, but Wait, she leapt off tusk? it, grabbed the dangling tooth, and tore it off the rest of the way. The creature swung its trunk for her again, but Ortis fired another shot and struck another part of its distant tail dead on, erupting a massive hole in its flesh. It recoiled in pain, but with it distracted, Mithil managed to grab its trunk and use its severed tusk to stab through the nose and pin it into the ground. Ah, the beast tried to rip why. itself free, but it was no use. Finally, Mithil raised her blade again and chopped it right down through the monster's skull. The back of its body continued to shake and wriggle for a moment, but eventually it stopped and lay still. Mithil glanced back towards her ally, then darted over to him. Well done, Ortis. That handy new weapon of yours seems to have been well worth acquiring. He nodded. It is amazing. But we're going to have to figure out another tactic for me to use it in battles when we're both fighting. Not every monster is going to have a big enough body for me to fire at it and not hit you with the explosions. Mythel grabbed right. the weapon out of his hands. Well, it is some sort of enchanted godly weapon. Perhaps you simply instructed on what to do. She shook it back and forth. Firebow, shoot less explosive shots or we'll replace you with a big axe or something. <laughs> Suddenly, a spurt of flame sprung from the bow and hit Mithil in the eyes. She dropped the weapon. Ow, that hurt, you glorified slingshot. Mithil raised a foot to stomp on it, but Ortis grabbed it off the ground. Wait, maybe you're onto something. Maybe it can understand us. Suriastra, can you shoot more than just explosive shots? Mithil blinked her eyes clear. Ask it if it likes not being chopped in half, because that is on the table if it shoots flames in my face again. Gripping the weapon in the gauntlet Ares had given him, Ortis suddenly felt a wave of warmth pulse through his body. He didn't hear any words, but felt like something had been communicated to him from the weapon. He pulled back Ooh. the string, and as usual, a flaming arrow appeared. But this time, he said, Piercing arrow. The flaming projectile suddenly shrunk in size to a much thinner arrow, made of blue flames. He released it towards a distant rock, and it drilled right through the stones, but didn't explode. Now that's Ortis's how you eyes do widened it. as he pulled back again and said, Broadshot. This time it turned to purple flames and split into an arrow with dozens of tips. He aimed it up in the air and loosed it. The arrows burst out in a cone pattern. He pulled back again, and this time his eyes narrowed as he tentatively said, Devastator arrow? The arrow oh, that no. appeared grew until it was thicker than Mithil's arm, and was swirling with black flames. Ortis's body shook holding it, and he quickly lowered it, slowly retracting his pull to make the arrow disappear. What <laughs> was that? Mithil asked excitedly. Shoot it, let's see what it does! A chill ran through Ortis's body. It's called a devastating arrow. I think we would all be screwed. <laughs> body. I don't know what it was, but I feel like we shouldn't mess with it unless we really need it. But this is fantastic. With that piercing shot, I'll be so much more help now. I almost want the next monster to come find us. That's well, you're not going to have to wait long for that, kid. Ortis turned to see Ares eating a sandwich leaned up against a tree. Izanami, the Shinto goddess of death, has gotten in on the action. She's finishing up some big ugly cow spider thing that's gonna come and get ya. Really gnarly looking. Hey, come on, don't. Mithil sprang at Ares once again and swung her sword Ugh. at him. He ducked around it and she chopped the tree behind him in half. Fine, fine. He swung his head back up and tapped it against the tree to make it fall backwards away from him. Oh, come on, I'm eating here. I'll tell you what, <laughs> you stop swinging at me and I'll let you have a third of my hydra meat sandwich. Deal? Ooh, Mithil hydra paused. meat. Is hydra meat good? He nodded, taking another bite. Oh, it's delicious, but it is really gamey. It's tough enough that humans can't even bite through it. You need demigod teeth, at least. <laughs> Mithil lowered her blade. All right, fine, it's a deal. Ares grabbed her blade and swung it upwards, cutting off the back end of his sandwich. Mithil caught it before it fell to the ground. Oh, you got group slang blood on it. Ares shrugged. Might add some flavor. Guess we'll find out together. <laughs> Mithil took a bite out of the sandwich and her eyes lit up. Ortis flipped through Echidna's tome to find the cow-spider creature Ares mentioned. It was just appearing in a gold flash of light. Wow, okay, here it is. The yokai known as the Ushioni? This thing Ushioni. is pretty freaky looking. Hmm, bit weird to call it a spider when it only has six legs, though. Finishing a bite, Ares said, 
I'll just be glad it's that yokai and not one of the weirder ones. There's this creepy little monkey one that'll try to steal your liver by reaching up through uh, where the sun don't shine. Yeah. Plus another turtle one with a hole in its head will try to steal your soul out of your keister. Really, a bunch of the yokai got a weird thing about butts, so just be glad this one doesn't. That is or way is too much butt stuff and disgust. With Japanese yokai. Okay, well, I guess this does sound better than that. Ares, do the gods know that you're helping us? A few of them probably do. I know my brother Zeus does by now. I basically told him pretty much just to annoy him. Ortis tilted his head. Wait, I thought I heard you wrong the last time you said that. I always thought Zeus was the father of Ares. Ares laughed. <laughs> oh, right. That would be confusing. See, a few decades back, I accidentally called him brother, and he got really angry about it. I thought it was pretty funny, so I've just constantly called him that since to tick him off. I like watching Pops get all riled up ever since he became a traitor to all humanity by joining that stupid Imperium Pantheon. Ortis closed the tome and stepped closer to Ares. I hate the Pantheon too, but why do you hate them so much? And what did you mean last time when you said I'd bought the same history the Pantheon's leader, Tarsa, had sold bum bum. everyone else? Ares finished up the last bite of his sandwich. That's a long story, kid. You two live long enough to prove you might actually be able to take Tarsa and her cronies out? Then I'll tell you. But you've got a lot of monsters to fight before then. He oh, vanished yeah. again Lots. in another swirl of smoke. Between bites, Mithil said, Is he just going to keep popping in and out as he pleases? Because if he is, he'd better bring me more of these sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I wish your mortal teeth were strong enough to taste this. It is sublime. Ortis got used to his bow's sure? new commands as Mithil finished her food. Then, they headed off towards the shores of the Black Sea. Echidna's tome stated that the Ushioni was a water-based creature. Orta suggested that they wait for it to come inland where it would be weaker, but Mithil wanted to fight it on its home territory. She wanted to face challenges to get stronger fast. Wait a minute, how is this cow spider somehow aquatic in nature? That doesn't make sense. So Ares would finally face her in combat. Mithil carried the massive tome under her arm, and Ortis, with their bag of supplies on him, on her back, and they reached the shores in a very short time. They made camp on a rocky ledge hanging a dozen feet or so above the water, and waited. Ortis flipped through the book and studied up on some of the most recent creatures to have been made. By the time night was falling, they still hadn't seen any signs of the Ushioni. Ortis had taken some time to rest, but was awakened by a golden light coming from inside the tome next to him. He flipped it open to the very back page to see Ooh, a new monster being got added. Something else. His heart stopped as he looked at the image coming into clarity. He leapt up. Mithil, we have to go. We have to get away from the water. He looked over at her, though, and saw that she was in a swirl of white mist with her blade in hand, ready to fight. Oh, we can't do that, Ortis. The fun is just about to get started. Ortis noticed that she was looking past him, and he turned to see a drooling creature crawling over the rock wall behind him. The Ushioni had finally found them. About damn time, you cow spider. I hope you have some de decent beef for all this waiting. What's next? Put me Bozu? Ortis grabbed the Suriastra no, and pulled it back, else. saying, Piercing shot, but didn't fire yet, backing towards his ally. I'm serious, Mithil, I don't think we're ready for what's coming. Oh, Ortis, when are you going to learn to love a good challenge as much as I do? It's a lot easier to love a challenge when you know it can't kill you. Ortis fired his arrow as the creature crawled towards them. It scuttled to the side, but the flaming blue shot still carved a gash into its side. Which sounds like a worse fate to you, Ortis? Dying or being captured and tortured for all eternity because you can't actually die, hmm? Because that's the Portal. fate I'm likely Definitely facing Portal. if these beasts do get the better of us. Mythal leapt at the creature, swinging her sword right for its head. It again scrambled aside, faster than expected, and Mythal struck stone. It then reared back and booted its front hooved feet into her side and smashed her against a wall of stones. Ortis fired another piercing shot that broke right through one of its legs. Oh, I, I guess I never thought about how much worse it would be to get captured by the Pantheon instead of killed. And since you're technically a god too, if they did torture you, your pain would never end. Aren't you afraid? Oh, that would The Ushioni thrust its head towards Mithil with its mandibles out to bite her. She dropped her sword, caught both mandibles, and held the beast back. Of course, but living an exciting life where I can actually feel some fear is far better than the boring drudgery I was living in before. She then ripped her arms to the sides and tore the mandibles off. She tried to stab them into the creature's eyes, but it sprung backwards and scuttled up the wall it had crawled over. Mithil leapt back and regrouped with Ortis as he said, I guess I can actually relate to that. I mean, I, I don't know if I can embrace fear as much as you, but 
Working with you is definitely a lot more fun than being a slave to the gods. They grinned definitely at each other in an unexpected moment that. of connection. Until Ordis continued. But I still think we need to fall back from the water. Why? We're handling this monster just fine? Ordis shook his head. No, not because of the Ushioni, because of... Suddenly, a plume of water exploded up near this. them from the sea. A massive orange head flew into the air, then swung down and snatched its jaw right around the Ushioni's body, cracking through its exoskeleton. It raised the beast up, chomped through it, chewing the Ushioni apart, and swallowing it. Ordis and Mythil stared up as water and the beast's blood splashed around them. The monster roared through a mouth on its head, chest, and shoulders, making a sound so loud the earth shook and the waters rippled out in a shockwave around it. What the it. hell is Mithil this? wasn't even the size of the horn on this monster's head. Well, I suppose I can see why that creature may have given you some cause for concern. What exactly is it? It's called Sipakli. Aztec deities See, claim Pockley, it existed huh? before the Earth itself, but Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca killed it and used its body to make the world. So they say, anyway, every group of deities has their own story about how the world was made. But this is a sort of junior version of it that was just remade by the leader of the Imperium Pantheon, Tarsa herself. If she used oh, her shit. incredibly powerful beast sphere to make this thing, it could be a hundred times stronger than anything we've fought. Mythil smiled. Well then, we'll just have to fight a hundred times harder than we've ever fought before, and hope Tarsa is watching for a preview of what- Oh, he's gonna use the Devastating Arrow. I can see it already. That's gonna be awesome! It's coming for her. The beast's dripping head careened down towards them with its jaw gaping open. Ortis pulled back a piercing arrow and fired it directly into the monster's throat. It struck, but only made the beast chomp its jaw closed in anger. Mythil sprung up and grabbed onto its horn, then swung her blade at its eye. The monster closed its eyelid and her weapon clanged off it. It swung up a humanoid frog hand and grabbed Mithil. It smashed her down into the stone near Ortis, quaking the earth enough to make him fall over. From the ground though, he pulled back another shot, letting it remain as the default explosive arrow. He rolled to the edge of the stone cliff over the water and aimed at the creature's tail. He released and the arrow struck a part of it just sticking out of the water behind the beast. The eruption knocked the tail back and made the water around it evaporate into boiling steam. Oh but there was no damage done to the tail. Oh crap. The monster then looked to Ortis and swung its other hand down at him. He would have been instantly flattened, but Mythil sprang out from under its other paw, wrapped herself around Ortis, and held her blade sticking up above them. The blade pierced into its palm, and Mythil's back stopped it from crushing her ally. It yanked its hand away and roared furiously, with yellow blood dripping from it. Well, good to know its pale, unarmored parts are vulnerable. Looks like we have a battle plan, then. Of course, the Ortis's heart was pounding. You... you saved me. Thank you. She chuckled, standing up to charge in again. Of course, I'm not letting you get out of this adventure that easily. She burst off the ground in a swirl of mist, aimed right at the Sipakli's chest. It opened the mouth on its chest, lowered itself, and nearly gobbled Mythil up. She held her feet against its lower jaw and her blade and arms against the upper, barely holding it back from chomping down onto her. Ortis aimed up at the monster's head and said, Broadshot. The flames turned purple and he fired. A barrage of arrows struck into its neck. They didn't penetrate deeply, but the creature still swung its head back in fury. The mouth closing around Mythil opened wider. She jumped free and stabbed her sword into its chest, yanking her blade down and cutting a huge slash into it. Ah, the beast the pirate shrieked cell. and swung its head down to bite her. It grabbed her- You all know what I meant when I said pirate cell. Come in its on. mouth and threw her straight upwards, sending her rocketing into the air. With Mythil spinning up into the sky, the monster looked back down at Ordis. But despite the overwhelming fear coming on, he aimed up again. Mythil was far enough away that he fired an explosive arrow at the monster's chest. It raised an armored arm and blocked, but was still pushed back by the eruption. Ortis fired another shot and another, barely able to see what he was doing through the blinding lights of his blast. One finally struck the creature in the neck, and it shrieked in fury. But it swung its arm down at him again. Mythil wasn't here to save him this time, but he dove backwards and just barely missed getting crushed. From the ground, he fired an explosive shot directly into the monster's mouth. It exploded and the beast shrieked, but it lunged its hand a bit farther forward and pinned Ortis to the ground under two of its fingers. He felt like his bones on, were being crushed shot. as it held him in place shot. and lowered its furious maw towards him, with smoke and flames sputtering out of it still from his shot. Ortis thought it may be time to try that Devastator arrow as a play of desperation, but his arm and the Suriastra were pinned. There was nothing he could do. 
Even still, as the monster's massive teeth got close, a strange sense of calm came over him. This is still a better fate than being a god slave. The creature oh, was just yeah. about to chomp down on him when a blur of white smoke shot down from the sky right into the creature's skull. Orange scales exploded off the monster as its eyes rolled back into its head, and it collapsed to the side next to Ordis. Its grip on him loosened, and he crawled backwards, then looked up. Through the clearing smoke, Ordis could see Mithil holding what sort of looked like her weapon, but extended into an even larger white blade. She stood up and yanked Ooh. it out of the creature's head. As she did, the, the white extension broke apart and turned into mist, fading away. Mithil, that was amazing, but what was that? She leapt off the creature's hmm. head to be next to Ordis, looking at her own weapon. I'm not entirely sure. It seems there are more things about my God Queller abilities that I don't know yet. White mist oh, swirled yeah, around her sense. free hand. She waved it and closed her fist. As she did, what looked like a white knife seemed to start to solidify, but then vanished. Ordis grinned. Well, let's hope the gods send more monsters after us soon so we can test that out again. <laughs> Mithil's eyes widened into her usual menacing grin. That's the spirit, Ordis. Let us show Tasa and those wretches just who they're dealing with. Mithil kicked the slain Seapocalypse's head and it slid back into the waters and vanished. If the gods were going to defeat this duo, they'd need something far tougher than that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Even a beast that's more that's out that's older than the odd itself was no match. Yes, it was a juvenile. My point I hope you enjoyed stands. this third episode of Mythal Lethal, and I highly recommend if you haven't seen them yet, go back to the first two episodes so you can get a bit more context for what's happening in the story. Oh, I am. Like my up. new and currently running series, Vigilance, I'm also releasing this as a series on Spotify and different podcasting platforms, and when the series is finished, I'm going to turn it into a book. So you can get a hard copy of all the art and the story. Also, huge thank you huh, to everybody cool. in the comments on YouTube who has suggested different mythological monsters and mythical deities that I could add into this series in my own designs and, you know, written to fit into this storyline. And know that I am planning to take a bunch more suggestions. But besides that, that's all for today, except, of course, for ending this video on some kind of positive, positive or inspiring, inspiring note. note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote I read this week on an Instagram called love.quotes, which said that the universe will never give you peace in something that you were never meant to settle in. And admittedly, Ooh, I personally feel like that's kind of why I, I like. feel more at peace now doing more original stuff than I felt when I was spending the majority of my time doing pop culture-based stuff. I still love those kinds of videos, and I'm glad I did them, and I'm going to be doing some more, but the original stuff just feels so much better. I hope that's inspiring, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday, which is going to be a very special ending to the My Singing Monsters Grand Prix. I'll see oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Alright everyone, well that's going to be the end of today's video and I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. A link to the original will be in the description below and I'll see all of y'all next time when we flick back on. Till then, this is Fox, signing out. Peace.